frankly, I'm not sure uh, what to talk about, which, you know, is fine. I mean, I, I mean, I could talk about politics, but I very specifically don't get into politics. Um... Well, I mean, you know, I try to limit that stuff over to the times. I could go on and on and on about politics. But that's, this is not a political chimney. Um, I, I suppose this is kind of reality podcasting. And one of the things that I do is go over my boring life. So I suppose I'll get that in a minute. But since it's out there, <clears throat> let's talk about uh, Avengers Infinity War. That's a, I mean, it, it's, I typically don't talk about movies, but this outdid Star Wars, which outdid everything. So this outdid the outdid every, I mean, this is the year of blockbuster, block, uh, busted blockbuster and bl- busting blocks uh, with movies. And I didn't talk about Star Wars. I don't think I did. Anyway. George, did I talk about Star Wars? Did Run a fact check. Do, go, if you get back to me by the end of the podcast. Infinity War. Um, my opinion of Infinity War. Doctor Strange is going to hold a time loop secret that's going to change it all. That's my, that's it. That's my, that's my thought. Um, it was kind of boring for me. It's because it was like, you know, one movie climax after another. It was just like a constant movie climax. I mean, I, I left exhausted. I, I was doing that. You know, you know that, that, that cinema 4D thing? I, I sat out. I made a video of it. It's going to appear on, on, on one of my vlogs because I vlog by topic, but it's, it's going to appear on one of them. Did, did, here I am outside the cinema 4D thing talking to this guy from Asia about how none of it makes sense. We didn't even have glasses. So you can't say that the fourth dimension is the experience. They've got, it's called 4D, but they've got five parts of the experience that they include. So that doesn't make any sense. So I, I, I couldn't make any sense of what in the world 4D is. I don't think I'm going to watch them anymore. I, I kept having to pick up my Coca-Cola, well, my Zero, excuse me. So that it didn't spill and bump. No, I don't want to hear the health nuts complaining to me about Coca-Cola. Healthy people don't go to movies anyway. So I, it's, it's, it's not a regular thing, though. I typically only drink Coca-Cola when, uh, when I'm traveling or when I'm... It, oh, yeah. Last week, last week I was in Vietnam. Yes. Uh, boring. I mean, just say, relaxing. I needed that. It was like healthy boring. A lot of people go to Vietnam and like they see stuff and they think it's exciting. For me, it's boring. She says, motorcycles everywhere. Well, this scooter motorcycle hybrid thing, it's really kind of something to watch. It's really, I mean, if you haven't been to Vietnam, I mean, by all means, go. Goodness, go. The younger generation doesn't care to fight a lot like younger black and white people don't care to fight. <clears throat> Except for the older uh, people on either side that are trying to make money from something. So, Avengers. It just seemed like one maxed out scene after another in in truth it it whatever happened to the good old days of the four hour movies i mean seriously well it it should have at least been three hours because you've got the big bad guy running around grabbing all these gems and once he puts them together on his gem glove thingy I know it's called a gauntlet, but I mean, who knows what a gauntlet is anymore since we've forgotten chivalry. Supposedly, he's able to, like, destroy half the universe once he gets this thing done. You'd think that it would take him a little more than two and a half hours to make his little collection to destroy the universe. That just, it seemed that each one of those should have been a movie in and of itself. And and I, you could argue that people are exhausted from it all, but I mean with, what is it? 16 or so movies before this. I know that there's probably, you can argue that there's others. With with, with all, I mean, I don't think audiences are, are getting exhausted. It seems to me that the more Marvel draws things out, the bigger their blockbusters bust blocks. So, I, anyhow, I just, it, it, was, it was too many climaxes all at once and it was massive sensationalism. It's nice to see different things come together. And I think you had a big convergence factor, the running gag, so to speak, you know, recurrence when, you know, things become a thing that people say, like, it's cool to say, yo, dude, you know, or whatever it happens to be. So 
that's what we had. Um, no, a lot of people are going to have to come back to life, which is another thing. It's just characters aren't allowed to die. I mean, they've got franchises uh, in stuff. All right. No, that's what I had to say about Avengers. Well, you know, the other thing, too, is I'm sort of fed up with all of... I mean, it's, it's entertaining to watch, but I am fed up with you know, whatever's going on in heaven, the most powerful beings up in heaven being bad. I'm kind of getting fed up with that. That's what we're getting out of Transformers and that's what we're getting out of Marvel Comics. No. The most powerful beings up in heaven, in outer space, whatever, are good and they're coming to reach to us because whatever it was, you know, Asgard is not, in, in real life, in the movies, Asgard is a bunch of good people leaving a world that got wrongfully destroyed. But in real life, in reality, the group that left heaven and came to earth were the bad guys and they're the ones messing with all the weird stuff in big companies and big governments. That's, that's what's really going on. And heaven is up there, the all-powerful, slowly breaking through, being patient enough to give us time to learn. He, you know, God up, up there wants us to have the victory against these imbeciles that he booted out. And they're the ones causing all the problems Bernie Sanders complains about. And I'm not talking about any conspiracy thing. I'm talking about demons. So, I, you know, Asgard, it's a great story. I, I love the story. I, I love watching. A lot of it's really, really brilliant, good writing. But the devil wants people to think that he's Thor and the demons he brought with him were the Asgardians. The devil wants people to think that. And there is no real life example of from the heaven coming down to earth because it got destroyed up there. There is none of that. Not the good guys anyway. And I'm kind of getting tired of that not being represented well. And that's an irritation of my own. That aside, if you don't try to compare it to reality, uh, I think it's great. But, you know, too many people, like Howard Beale said, they get their reality from the tube. So out of my own personal life, I'm, I'm looking at, at revamping the podcast and adding videos. So if you've been here, I mean, a number of people listen to the podcast through podcasting memes and channels where it's all audio. But there's this YouTube thing, and I'm looking at adding video to that at some point. I'm seriously, seriously thinking about it. That was, a, that was kind of an inspiration that I had when I was in Vietnam this week. I'm not going to see where I was in Vietnam, but they've got this Coca-Cola coffee flavor. Like, like it's a coffee in the Coke. Like it's really, it's really something. I don't know why they don't have it in the States. All right, I'm just, I'm just going to cut it off and get to the point. The world has an overabundance of independent wills, each orbiting with its own motive. No matter what pursues you, something else is pursuing it, just as you have your own pursuits. When an adversary focuses too much energy on one target, it leaves itself vulnerable to other assaults. This is true in commerce, friendship, politics, and war. If an enemy comes after you, stare him down. Keep him busy while he aims all his focus toward you. His flanks remain open. No such assailant lacks enemies. Sooner or later, one of the bounty hunters looking for him will swoop in. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele. JesseSteele.com